Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you guys all the possible ways of connecting the Eero 6 Plus. So you might have heard of wired or Ethernet backhaul or wireless backhaul. So I'm going to show you guys all the different types of connections. I have a modem here, an unmanned switch, a bunch of Ethernet cables, and I have another router here. So if you guys are interested in the speed test and range test, the performance aspect of this and the Eero app itself, I've done that in a separate video. So I'll put a video link in the description box below. I'll also put the product links that I'm using in the description box below if you're interested in picking something up. And if you guys haven't already, smash that subscribe button. I really appreciate all the support if you guys enjoy these types of videos. Okay. And if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave in the comment sections below. I try my best to answer them. What is a mesh Wi-Fi? What's the advantage over a standard router? Well, a mesh Wi-Fi is when you have two or more units working together where at least one of them is a router because technically in this case, both of these are actually routers. However, in the same network, only the main one that's hooked up to the modem is acting as the router. But basically these work together to increase your Wi-Fi coverage throughout your home. So you might need two, you might need three, you might need four but there eventually is a limit to how many you could get because it, it depends on how you're connecting it. But essentially these are designed to get rid of Wi-Fi dead zones. So if you're going to one corner of your house and you're losing signal or it's kind of cutting in and out or something like that, or it's a weak signal, these are designed to take care of that. Okay. Now, if you have, so we're going to talk about the different scenarios and I'm going to show you guys all the connections. So, if you have your modem hooked up to your router and you're thinking about, you know, increasing your Wi-Fi coverage, well, when you get this, you no longer need your router. So you basically just unplug this. This is done. And you get any one of these because these are both technically routers, but the one that's hooked up to the modem becomes acts as the router. The one, the secondary one is no longer acting as a router. It's acting as something else, even though physically it is a router. Now you get this, you have one of two ports and they're both auto sensing. So it doesn't actually matter which one you connect it to. And some mesh systems, it does like the Nest Wi-Fi Pro. You do have to put it in a certain spot, but for this one, it's auto sensing. It doesn't matter which one you select. You're good to go. Now these are limited to gigabit speeds. So if you have internet speeds or planning on getting internet speeds faster than gigabit, I would not get the Euro 6 plus. I would get something faster than this. And I've done a whole bunch of videos on comparing routers and mesh Wi-Fi to each other. I'll put those links in the descrip description box below as well. Okay. Now some of you guys may have a modem router combo. So it's the router is built into this thing. So in my case, this is just a modem, so I could skip that step. But if you have a modem router combo, you basically have to disable the router that's built into this thing. And the way you typically do it, I mean, it depends on the model. The simplest way is you could just call your internet service provider and just ask them to switch it for a modem, or you can ask them how to disable the router. But it's typically, you may have to Google it, but typically there's an IP address or some a browser address you go to with the computer and then you can access the settings and there, there should be a disable router option or put the router in bridge mode which essentially disables it so once you do that you can now again connect it to the zero any port you want and again you're creating that network so now that you've done this you get the ear app on your phone and you follow the instructions it, it literally tells you what to do you make the connections and you pick a Wi-Fi name and a password. Now, if you want, completely optional, you can pick the same Wi-Fi name and password and they are both case sensitive, even the SSID or the Wi-Fi name itself is case sensitive. But if you pick the same one as the router you're replacing, your devices should automatically connect to this new one. Now. Once that's set up at this point in time, even though you got a mesh Wi-Fi, don't actually need to use both. You can just use one. And now you have a complete system. Technically, your devices should automatically connect to this and you should be good to go. But in most cases, you're probably picking up a mesh Wi-Fi because you want to use more than one. In this case, we have two and you have two ways of connecting it. And we'll get to increasing ports and stuff in a bit, but you have two ways of connecting the mesh Wi-Fi's to each other. 
Number one is called wired backhaul, otherwise known as ethernet backhaul. And the way you do that is basically you connect the other port on the main router and you connect it to the secondary one. And obviously these are hooked up to power and obviously the cable modem is hooked up to a coax unless you have an ONT or, you know, uh, I'm omitting those for the demonstration. This is all ethernet connections basically. Okay, so once you do this in the Eero app, it, you just click, you add another Eero. In fact, when it comes as a group, the Eero app will tell you like, hey, do you want to power the other one on? It automatically detects it. You're good to go. At this point in time, you've now ensured the best possible connection in the case of the Eero, which is the wired backhaul connection, which is the case for most mesh systems. Um, well, typically, connecting something over Ethernet is, is typically uh, a better and faster way. Typically, not always, but typically is. Okay, so in this case, you're pretty much done. If this is, you know, uh, at the other side of your house, this is in the other side, you're, you're pretty much getting fairly good coverage. I mean, every home is different, but you're pretty much done at this point. So if you take your Wi-Fi device and you're closer to this one, it will automatically switch you to this one. If you walk throughout your home, you're watching a video, it doesn't matter, you're talking on the phone, whatever, it will automatically switch you to this other one and you don't have to do anything, which is the amazing part of that. Okay, so that covers wired backhaul. Now, wired backhaul is not always convenient to do. So what, what's the other option? Well, the other option is called wireless backhaul and it's essentially, you don't need a cable between them. So this guy is hooked up to your modem, which does need an ethernet cable, acts as the router. The secondary one, you just plug it into the power, the USB-C power that comes with this thing. And you add it in the Eero app, if, if it wasn't already, and it will automatically find this, and these two will wirelessly talk to each other. So this one will also be on the same network, boosting your Wi-Fi coverage, kind of basically acting as an extender. The issue, it's not really an issue because, well, okay. This is very convenient and I think this is one of the best selling points for mesh Wi-Fi is because it's like, hey, just connect your main one, go, you know, one or two rooms away, maybe 30, 40 feet away or so. You can't go too far, but it does need to be optimally placed and the Eero app will tell you. But essentially like 30 to 40 feet is a pretty good number. I mean, depends on home, but this thing will wirelessly connect to this. The only issue with this is this will not be, typically, will not be as fast as this guy. So if I'm doing a Wi-Fi speed test and I'm closer to this one and it switches me here, the internet won't be as fast as if I'm closer to this guy and I'm doing a Wi-Fi speed test on this because this guy is directly hooked up to the modem via ethernet giving you the internet access whereas this one i am basically wirelessly going to this one and then this one's also wirelessly going to this one then we're going to the internet so that's the disadvantage of wireless backhaul which is the advantage of wired backhaul because when it's wired backhaul you're pretty much going to get the same speeds here as you are here so if you can do wired backhaul i that's what i recommend that's what i use okay now let's suppose you need more ports because that's one common thing that I see with mesh Wi-Fi is they don't have too many ports. And if you're like me and you have several devices with that require ethernet, well, how do you expand your ports? Well, the simple answer to that is you need an unmanaged switch. And there are differences between a managed and an unmanaged switch. Essentially, in a nutshell, a managed switch gives you more options. You can set up VLANs, virtual local area networks. You could assign IP addresses. You could, you could customize a whole bunch of other stuff. An unmanaged switch pretty much can't customize anything. This is a plug and play device. You plug it into the power, you hook it up to your router and or your access point and the router controls everything, which is kind of what you want. I mean, that's what I use an unmanaged switch. In most cases, you want an unmanaged switch. And the good thing is unmanaged switches cost a lot less than managed switches. So, and again, product links are the description box below. Okay. So if I want to increase my ports, all I need to do is I have lots of options, okay? So what I could do is I could hook it up to the secondary port of this guy and pick any port I want. Ports one through eight does not matter which one I use. If I want to use two, I use two. If I use one, I use one. It does not matter. 
But essentially I like to use the first one or the last one that's hooked up to the router just so I know quickly. But again, completely up to you which one you wanna use. So in this case, if I have a computer or a laptop or an Xbox or whatever, and I wanna connect that via ethernet, well I pick any other port I want, I connect this and I'm good to go. If you guys are wondering, there are several sizes for these. So there's a four port, five port, eight port, 16 port, 24. I think there's a 32 and a 48. But basically there are switches with lots of ports. So you're good to go in most cases. Okay, and if you need to connect another device, well, go right ahead. Pick any port you want, plug it in, plug in the other device and now you're connected to the network, which is now connected to the internet. So you're good to go from that aspect. If you guys are wondering, hey, can I go through an unmanaged switch and get a wired backhaul connection? And the answer is absolutely. You can go from this router to this switch, and then you can go from this switch to this other router. And now you've just created a very fast connection. This is actually the one that I use, wired backhaul. It's, it typically creates the most stable and fastest connections possible. Okay, so now I've created a fast wired backhaul. Now, I can also, if I wanted to, if I have another switch, an unmanaged switch, I can go from this guy to this unmanaged switch, from this one to this other unmanaged switch, and then from that one I could go here, or I can just add the other unmanaged switch, this guy directly. You're free to connect any Ethernet device to any one of these minus the modem. Another common question I get asked is, okay, this is in wireless backhaul mode. Can I use these ethernet ports to connect my devices? And the answer is absolutely you can. Just connect it right here, connect your device, and you're good to go. And this will wirelessly talk to this one. It will be on the same network. You'll be good to go. Another question I get asked is, okay, if I do that, do I get the fastest possible speeds? Because now I'm connected via ethernet, right? So let's just assume for the, the purposes of this demo, this is a laptop that requires ethernet, so I connect this via ethernet. Well, the problem is, the simple answer is no. This is not gonna give you the fastest possible connection because even though this is hooked up via ethernet to this, this these two have a very fast, strong connection. But from this to this, it's not as fast because even though these are fast, this still needs to wirelessly hop to this guy to then go through the internet. So it would be much faster if I, if this laptop, supposed laptop, was connected directly to the Eero because then I'm going from ethernet to the Eero and then ethernet to the modem and out to the internet. So this would create a faster connection than going to that. And I can also, if I wanted to, connect an unmanaged switch to the wireless backhaul and I can use all of these ports to connect devices too but again it's not going to be as fast because there's still a wireless hop. Now does brand matter because you might have noticed that this is actually a Netgear so does brand matter for an unmanaged switch and the simple answer is no. You can get a Netgear, it'll work with an Eero, it'll work with an S-Wi-Fi Pro, it'll work with a TP-Link Deco, a Netgear Orbi, an Asus, ET8, ET12. It, unmanaged switches are designed to work with any router, basically. You can also get a Netgear for one unmanaged switch and get, let's just say, a TP-Link for another unmanaged switch and those will all work together. So brand does not matter for an unmanaged switch. Unlike for the Eero, it does matter. In the same mesh network, it does need to be the same Eero. When you're talking about a router or an extender, it needs to be the same. But with the Eero's, again, you can, you can even combo other Eero's. You can get the Pro 16, use it with these. That also works fine because according to Eero, these can all be combined. And finally, the most common question I get asked with unmanaged switches is, can I hook it up directly to the modem and then from the modem go to these two, and the simple answer is no. You can't go from modem to an unmanaged switch. It needs to go from modem to router first. This is the most important thing. You cannot bypass this. So once this is connected, then from here you can go to these and you should be good to go. So hopefully that answered your questions. If you guys have any additional questions, please let me know in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.